Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Career Preparation in the Land-Grant Tradition, hosted by the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching at Iowa State University. Um, this is an important webinar for all fields, particularly those in the humanities and social sciences, um, which have many uh, capstone theory-based classes um, however, career preparation sometimes calls for a more practical approach, which we'll learn by understanding the land-grant tradition. I'm very uh, happy to um, be part of the um, amazing tradition at Iowa State University of Science and Technology. So without further ado, let's go ahead and launch into our presentation. The goals of the presentation are very simple. We're going to begin with uh, insight into the land grant values, um, new teaching strategies for student career development and transforming theory-based classes into practical ones. The use of the internet and videos to convey key concepts to Generation Z, which learns visually at a much accelerated pace. Well, what is the land-grant tradition? First, a little history. The 1862 Morrill Act specified career preparation, and its purpose is simply stated, to promote the liberal and practical education of the industrial classes in the several pursuits and professions in life. Higher education at the time was unavailable to agricultural and industrial workers. That's why the Morrill Act provided courses for students to learn that had relevancy to jobs and daily life. Iowa State University is proud to be among the first land-grant institutions. On September 11th, 1862, the legislature was the first to accept the act's provisions. Iowa raised funds for Iowa State Agricultural College and Model Farm, later known as Iowa State University. One land-grant institution exists now in every state and territory of the United States, as well as the District of Columbia. And we welcome today our colleagues from land-grant institutions across the country that came to view this CELT webinar. Land grant core values, there are some. A commitment to free speech, equal opportunity in education and jobs, non-discrimination of protected classes. And this includes marital, parental status, sexual orientation, gender, disability, and veterans, of course. Educating students to work in a diverse world. Acknowledgement of past mistreatment of Native Americans taking their land. 1994, Congress designated more than two dozen tribal colleges as land grants. Well, the tradition calls for us to focus on service to the community and state. Simply put, educators are expected to extend the benefits of knowledge, research, and problem solving across the state. Every academic department should ask this fundamental question, how are we serving the community and our state? Here are just a few of Iowa State contributions. There are several pages. I just uh, cherry picked some of our most famous, one, famous ones. The Agricultural Experiment Station was established in 1888. That's um, really a few decades after the act was established. The George Washington Carver legacy that we have here begins studying as a student and later as a teacher. Engineering experiment station created. First agricultural journalism classes begin. In 1937, the first computer developed by physics professor John Vincent at Atanasov. The Ames Laboratory is created in 1947. In 1970, we get the encoding used in fax machines in 87. ISU Research Park was founded. 
And in 2011, Iowa State scientist Dan Schechtman receives the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Every land grant institution should have data about state residents. Now, the goal in every state is to recruit students from each county. There are 99 counties in Iowa, and Iowa State is proud to have students from all 99 counties. That's the goal. 15,385 Iowans attend ISU. That's 55.2% of the student body. 62% of ISU graduates remain in the state. And look at this statistic. 22% of out-of-state Iowa State graduates remain in Iowa. And that last statistic is important in your assessment projects. Uh, keep track of that. Uh, that is a really good uh, datum to share with legislators. Okay. Let's talk about key academic courses. We're gonna be focusing in this session on capstone classes, but there are foundation courses. These are basic skills such as written, oral, visual, electronic communication. Then there are departmental foundation courses, and those are perhaps orientation or a few introductory courses. The capstone course is very strictly defined as knowledge and skills gained over the college career in one assignment. Capstones need to be practical. Projects should showcase a, a, to a totality of work, skills, and aspirations. Now, I know not everyone's going into the workforce. Some might be seeking advanced degrees or perhaps going into law or medicine, they can do research projects that engage the community. Essays and exams alone are insufficient in capstone classes. Theory-based classes must rethink assignments, especially with the advent of chat GPT, which eventually will be the demise of the term paper. That is part of a previous CELT webinar that I gave on chat GPT available at the CELT website. In our capstone media ethics class, with, now keep in mind this is a media ethics class with a large dose of philosophy, very theoretical, but our students create online portfolios with personal ethics codes. And these portfolios showcase all their work and previous classes and internships. It prepares students for the state and regional workforce, showcases their skills with one internet link. The goal here is to help them secure a position within six months of commencement. This is a more in-depth look at our Capstone Media Ethics Project. Remember, this is a theoretical course and we're making it practical. I include many um, YouTube videos because my students tend to learn uh, quickly by uh, videos. Uh, their generation has learned uh, this way, particularly on YouTube. So this one here is how to assemble a WordPress site. Now students create their projects with personal ethics code and it contains all of the material that they have done here Content in my class has to be at least across two media platforms, but this particular step-by-step -step instruction helps them understand how to use technology to create that portfolio. Now, portfolio, portfolios or any capstone class should provide assessment data. Portfolios contribute to placement efforts. They serve as what we call a direct measure evidence of quality, not the perception of it. They play a role in our school's accreditation or in your institution's accreditation. It helps our students secure jobs and internships. And again, their entire history as Capstone is accessible in one digital link. Now I give instructions on ethics codes. They have a PowerPoint, they have videos, but essentially here's the process. 
Students view codes from agencies and organizations. They research corporate mission and compliance sites. Sometimes students are surprised to see that their values are not shared by companies. And the lesson here is shared values enhance corporate retention and success. And we communicate that to students during lecture. The pedagogy of ethics codes. Students really think about what their core values are. Do they embrace the golden rule? What mottos were they brought up on? How does religion or education play into how they see the world? They come up with their values and then they study corporate and organizational codes and they align their personal values with corporate ones. They apply for internships, jobs with compatible companies, and they focus on Iowa and alumni firms. Employers look for hires who know the value of accountability, truth, fairness, equity, and inclusion. We stress that during the interview, when a question is asked, a job interview, when a question is asked about accountability, refer them to your personal code of ethics. Now you can see all of our class projects over the years at this URL, myethicsclass.com forward slash portfolios. Students have given us written permission to share their links, and these are disciplinary categories of their portfolios all across the board, from advertising to videography, and they secure jobs in internships in these positions and professions. These are the required portfolio tabs that they must have. A home tab showcasing what's inside, an about tab that gives a glimpse of the student's personality, goals, and hobbies, a resume, a digital resume, which we'll talk about soon to supplant the old high school word um, uh, resume that is so outdated now in our visual technological era. Work samples includes multimedia videos, photography campaigns, advertising and PR, public relations, social media, class projects, blogs, you name it. And their ethics codes has to have at least five to six values. Now their contact information, we prefer that they do that via email rather than text because that gives away their personal telephone number and we discourage giving, uh, publicizing their personal numbers. Now, Gen Z learns by YouTube and you can access a sample video on how to design a digital resume. I'll include that link here and also in the bibliography. The bibliography to this session will be available uh, via CELT after our uh, webinar. But you can also uh, access, access this on YouTube. And here we're gonna take a, a look at some uh, media uh, ethics class samples. There's one by Eric Hogan. Notice that she has subheads. It's beautifully designed, links to internships. Here's one designed for the cell phone with a headshot, an action shot, links to work samples, short bio, concise design. Here's another one for the uh, cell phone subheads, note skills, links to personal website and so forth. And here's another one with name highlighted, a resume and a bio with a downloadable PDF link. And you can take a look at all the samples here by accessing that particular video. I am gonna play this in its entirety. This is a video of our re required tabs.
I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, these portfolios empower students. It gives them agency. They are in control of their project because their project is about everything they have done at the Greenlee School. And you could make this about your school, about your department, about your college. Um, the assignment of the portfolio is half the grade. That puts the onus on students really to uh, to, to focus on this uh, project for themselves, not for a grade. Uh, the midterm and final are based on philosophy and theory, but here's a practical project in a theory class. And that's the point of my showing you this. You might say, well, that's journalism. And journalism is very practical. Every humanities class, every social science class has some sort of work-based counterpart. And it's up to you to find those in theory classes and then design assignments where a student's work over the course of his, her, or their career can be showcased very simply in one link or in one practical project. And the goal of the portfolio, again, infuses practice into theory class, and that aligns with the land-grant tradition. Portfolios empower students. And as we said, this is so important that um, I had to stress that again. Now, it also gives them a competitive advantage. Here's an example. Students from other communication programs ask employers if they can send samples of their work. Our students send one link representing everything from skill sets to personal values. Moreover, they include their links in social media like LinkedIn, and that gives them that competitive edge. We can actually assess that. Um, the result has been outstanding job placement within six months of graduation. Our 2021 statistics are 88.3% of advertising majors secured employment, 90.7% of journalism majors, and an amazing 95% of public relations majors also secured employment. All right, there's no need to change the catalog description. You can just create practical assignments and applications that prepare them for career success. Now, remember, these capstone classes must have some sort of link to their entire institutional career. But practical assignments can be used as evidence of quality, especially if you include alumni or job prospect or internship providers to uh, weigh in on them and review them. Now, I know that in our case, portfolios require digital tools. And thankfully, the Greenlee School provides Adobe Creative Suite to media ethics students. Now, if you're in the, in the social sciences and humanities, you have to perhaps ask for that technological support. But say that it's in the land grant tradition, and this is great publicity for the department or college. Now, institutions may need new foundation courses that focus on digital skills and technology literacies, but you in your capstone class can provide visual YouTube or processes that appeal to Gen Z and motivate them to do this for themselves. 
career placement in the land grant tradition. Okay, that contributes to the state economy. It provides state employers with workers. It helps students alleviate debt. It retains Iowans uh, in Iowa and out of out of state students here. And it, it, there's a, a, a there's some gratitude gets involved in this when we ask them for donations after they graduate. If we have done a good capstone class, that is almost always the result. They make their first donation to your program. This is the bibliography that um, you can access uh, on this video, or you can ask SELC uh, to send that to you. And I hope that you have time to um, uh, fill out an evaluation. Just uh, take a picture of that code that will send you to our online evaluation. I thank you for your time. I also, uh, again, want to thank CELT and, uh, and the wonderful employees there. I also want to thank my students for allowing me to showcase their work. And of course, thank you for taking time out of your day to um, connect with us in this webinar about preparing careers in the land grant tradition. Thank you.